We're going to move on now to Illinois, where six people were killed in that Amazon warehouse. Federal regulators now investigating the collapse as we're getting a more clear picture of those fatal final moments inside the building. Rob Marciano is in Edwardsville with that. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, George. We are learning new details of exactly what happened inside this Amazon package processing facility the night that EF3 tornado hit with winds of 150 miles an hour cutting through this very new, huge concrete warehouse. Employees had about a 20 minute warning when they were working inside that a tornado was coming, giving them enough time to scramble north into the shelter in place area. But this is all happening around eight o'clock when drivers were finishing their daily routes. So there probably were some drivers that were outside not getting that warning, maybe seeing the tornado as it approached and then scrambling inside what they hoped to be a safe place. All of the six deceased and one victim still in the hospital were discovered in the same place, presumably huddling together in what they hoped to be a safe spot. And then the tornado hit and those concrete walls collapsed around them. Just frightening, heartbreaking details. OSHA is here today uh, investigating the safety procedures and the code of this building, and that continues this week. Hey everyone, so before we get into this, I want to be really clear, trigger warning for death and destruction and um, rampant unchecked capitalism. So let's get into it. Deadly collapse at Amazon warehouse put spotlight on phone ban. We're going to go through this piece by piece and then we've got a couple supplemental articles. Mm hmm. Okay. An Amazon.com Inc. warehouse collapse on Friday night that killed at least six people has amplified concerns among its blue-collar workforce about the return of the Internet retailer's mobile phone ban in work areas. The warehouse in Edwardsville, Illinois, near St. Louis, was reduced to rubble when a string of tornadoes ripped through six states leaving a trail of destruction that stretched more than 200 miles. Emergency responders expect recovery efforts to continue into next week. Amazon had for years prohibited workers from carrying their phones on warehouse floors, requiring them to leave them in vehicles or employee lockers before passing through security checks that include metal detectors. The company backed off during the pandemic, but has been gradually reintroducing it at facilities around the country. So to understand this, a string of tornadoes hit and apparently destroyed this place. And the devastation was stretched more than 200 miles. That's fucking insane. And the fact of the matter is, is that these people couldn't be warned because they couldn't have phones. This is insanity. So let's see what else happened. Five Amazon employees, including two who work across the street from the building that collapsed, said they want access to information such as updates on potentially deadly weather events through their smartphones without interference from Amazon. The phones can also help them communicate with emergency responders or loved ones if they are trapped, they said. After these deaths, there is no way in hell I am relying on Amazon to keep me safe said one worker from a neighboring Amazon facility in Illinois. If they institute the no cell phone policy, I am resigning. Yeah. Yeah, this is insanity because these people had no way to connect out. They had no, they, it almost sounds like they had no, the phones can also help them communicate with emergency responders, loved ones if they're trapped. Yeah, like, like you left these people basically with no, no way to reach out for any kind of help or support like this is this is disgusting this is awful by its nature another worker from an amazon warehouse in indiana said she is using up her paid time off whenever the company decides to remain open despite warnings of extreme weather events 
Having her phone with her is critical to making those decisions, especially about sudden tornado risks, she said. I don't trust them with my safety to be quite frank, she said. If there's severe weather on the way, I think I should be able to make my own decision about safety. Amazon declined to address the concerns raised by workers about its mobile phone policy, saying its focus now is on assisting the brave first responders on the scene and supporting our affected employees and partners in the area. So Amazon said nothing. The concerns about phone access highlight the deep distrust between executives who make rules focused on productivity and efficiency to gain a competitive advantage, and hourly frontline workers who often fear their safety is secondary to moving packages. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, the world's wealthiest man after Elon Musk, only fueled such feelings by spending the earlier part of Saturday celebrating a celebrity space launch by his company Blue Origin while emergency crews at the warehouse dug through rubble looking for bodies. At around 8 p.m. Central Time, Bezos tweeted to offer his well wishes. So, this Lex Luthor looking motherfucker, not even Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor is a fine man, this guy's like a fucking stick with a fucking someone sanded down the head. Goddamn. Um, I don't even have a good enough insult for him. He just frustrates me. Um, anyway, so this, this guy is sitting there working on his, again, ego project while people are dying. I have thoughts, but I want to try to get through this. One person familiar with Amazon's warehouse construction said the buildings are designed to local standards that account for events such as severe storms and snow loads. Warehouses in tornado-prone areas include space that is more heavily reinforced with extra steel and concrete where workers are instructed to huddle in event of emergencies, he said. Still, extreme weather events can topple buildings. In 2018, Two Amazon warehouse workers died in Baltimore when a building partially collapsed in a strong storm. The National Weather Service puts out extreme weather alerts via text messages, letting oh. the public know in advance about dangerous conditions. Yeah, especially in areas where you have like snow or like extreme weather like tornadoes, you will absolutely get messages saying, hey, like this, this is this is a lot. Um, we'll finish this off and then we have a couple follow-ups and some, and we'll give our, our takes. Tornadoes are trickier to anticipate than hurricanes and snowstorms, but the Weather Service still issues warnings to those in their path. The Weather Service sent such a warning at about 8 p.m. local time Friday, about 30 minutes before the storm collapsed the Edwardsville Amazon delivery station, the workers said. Two Amazon employees who work in a facility across the street said workers huddled in bathrooms to protect themselves from the storm, unaware the building across the street had collapsed. Power outages blocked communications. They were sent home from work after 11 p.m. when it was deemed safe to travel. After this, everyone is definitely afraid of not being able to keep their phones on them, one of the workers said. Most employees that I've talked to don't keep their phones on them for personal conversation throughout the day, it's genuinely for situations like this. So again, Amazon, a massive company, a company that I think should be just taken over by the federal government and just subs you know, just so just socialized, just made a function of the government because no one should have this amount of power, uh, at least that what people that are not necessarily beholden to us. Um, that when you become this big, my general rule of thumb is you should just become, um, you should just become a, a, a utility essentially. Um, but so this happened and it's awful. Bezos responds hours after bla hours after blasted for silence on Amazon warehouse tra tra tragedy in Illinois. At least six people were killed in the Amazon warehouse crash after a tornado ripped through. So didn't the other one say that there had been number of deaths, number of deaths. Oh, 
when he's dead? That's the question. I just want to know. Okay, so Basil put out a statement about the warehouse tragedy. Basically, stayed quiet while he was dealing with his, you know, penis-shaped rocket. And how many injured? Because it only says six people were killed after the collapse of the warehouse ripped through Edsville. It said fifty to hundred people. Um, we're trapped inside, so that why well, trapped under those other people inside the warehouse. Yeah, dozens of others have been killed in a series of severe storms that struck five states, including Arkansas, Illinois, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Missouri. But Bezos failed to mention his lost employees when he took to social media to applaud the uh, successful landing of another one of his space tourist missions. Wait, so you decided to post that? So. I know that everyone's like really hardcore about the whole eat the rich thing and all that, but I want to be really clear about this. To be a billionaire, you have to be evil. You have to be a person who can look at the world and decide that your desires, your wants trump everyone else's. We see this every time billionaires try to affect and do anything. Think about it. For one, we know that, um, and we learned this from, uh, what was it? Um, oh, God, what was that show? Um, Patriot Act. Patriot oh, Act, yeah. Hassan Majan uh, went over, um, he went over the fact that Bill Gates basically interfered with Washington State's elections uh, and they're voting for a bill to make more charter schools. And he just kept pushing it on them until eventually they voted in. And when it was basically found to be unconstitutional, he just had the law modified and then he pushed it again. This is a man using his wealth to leverage a state to do what he wants, even though charter schools are garbage. People like Elon Musk, Bezos, Bill Gates. Gates, for example, has done great things in third world countries. Okay, that's that's fine. But again, look at what they do in the first world. Look at the way they use their wealth to gain power, influence, and the ability to do things that they want. Instead of being concerned for his employees, Jeff Bezos was worried about his penis-shaped rocket. Right? So, yeah, here's them coming back from their Blue Origin nonsense, so that's fine. Nauseating and heartbreaking. Amazon worker killed trying to warn others of the tornado, family says. After an alert was issued Friday night about a deadly tornado approaching Illinois, Carla Copes told her son to get to shelter at the Amazon delivery facility where he was working. Instead, she told the Daily Beast her 29-year-old son, Clayton, insisted he needed to alert others about the impending natural disaster. He just said he needed to tell someone that the tornado was coming. Cope told the Daily Beast on Saturday, hours after she learned her son was among the six people killed in Edwardsville, Illinois, when storms ripped through. He had a big heart and he was a very sweet man. The deadly incident at Edwardsville mirrors a grim scene in at least six other states after what could have been described as the longest reported tornado path in history. God, it's almost like global warming is completely fucking up weather. The natural disaster has killed at least 70 people in Kentucky and three in Tennessee, and left hundreds scrambling to restart their lives after the homes were obliterated. The level of devastation is unlike anything I've ever seen. Kentucky Governor Andy Boucher said, this will be, I believe, the deadliest tornado system to have ever run through Kentucky. The Navy spokesperson has confirmed the Daily Beast that Clayton Cope enlisted in 2010 and served as an aviation electronics technician for a majority of his service. Before separating from the Navy in September 2016, he received a series of awards and decorations, including the National Defense Service Medal and the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal. He was one of he was one of a kind. He was that one of one of one of a kind person. Uh, let's see. Dudu said he was great, lovely. Dudu. Cope said her son started his job as a maintenance me mechanic at Amazon's fulfillment center earlier this year when he wasn't working. Cope said her son loved riding his Harley and fishing. So this kid, instead of just tucking and taking shelter, yeah, taking shelter, actually went out and warned these people. And it's entirely conceivable that this kid is the reason why it was let. It was only six. 
One of the things we always have to look at, and this is the hardest part about these stories, is anytime you're looking at these stories, it's very easy to look at the six dead or the 50 injured or whatever. It's much, much more, I think, important to look at the, the nuance and look at who these people are. Not because we're trying to decide whether we should care or not, but because I think it's important to realize these are lives. Sometimes when they're reduced to numbers, they're abstracted. We don't feel the impact. You can say three quarters of a million of people have died from COVID, but really think about each person you know in your life and realize that there are 750,000 people who don't get to sleep in their beds tonight, don't get to be with their family members, don't get to be around their loved ones. This absolute king's name was Clayton Cope. His mother was Carla Cope. Absolute Chad. Right? Absolutely. So, well, I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the, the idea of, you know, celebrating our soldiers. I will say, this guy had the heart of trying to help people. I don't know what else he did in his life. I'm not really actually worried about it because in his last moments, he did the right thing. That's pretty cool. I guess all I want to say about this is just no one can control the weather, though we've damaged it significantly due to climate change. Jeff Bezos' behavior really does denote the level of absolute apathy and absolute obsession with productivity that Amazon shows. Now, I'm not going to tell anyone to boycott Amazon. If you can, great. Not everyone can. I know a lot of people who are disabled who have to use Amazon as a regular source. I'm not going to fault anyone for that. Sometimes you just got to work with what you got. What I am going to say, though, is that we can absolutely hold them accountable for this and continue to ask for unions at Amazon and for rules like this to always be pushed back on. No one should be without their phone in an in freaking tornado alley. The fact that there wasn't, um, you know, plans already in place and like, hey, ways to actually take care of people. Or a basement. Or a basement. Yeah. No, no. These plans also. Okay. Let's say you send your kid to camp. I guarantee you those camp counselors who are like, you know, 16, 17, 20, 21, absolutely have fucking training on how to deal with severe weather. Why the fuck? Can't Amazon have that? Why? Brittany's hot take. Uh, it should be illegal to have your phone taken away unless you, from you unless it's a safety hazard. True. I also don't think it should be able to be compensated by police, nor should they be able to force you to use your fingerprint. That too, yeah. No one should be able to get in your phone without permission. I actually think it should be absolutely a problem. I actually think this is true in a lot of senses. Here, hot take that has nothing to do with this case, but I'll just say it. The, uh... Life 360 app is creepy. No one should be able to track their kids. No one should be able to, in any way, look at where their kids are going online. If you really think there's a problem, sure, have a conversation with them and work with them. But any of that kind of stuff is creepy as hell. Because, and here's where the problem, something like a Life 360, someone might argue, well, with, with the phones, we'd be able to know where these people are. Except they didn't have their fucking phones on them. They were turned off. So your apps don't even work in one of the situations it could be beneficial. Yeah, no, I'm honestly of the opinion, like, no, I, at this point, there is so much stuff on people's phones that I think there should be a lot of effort people have to go through to actually go through that. Because it, essentially, like, your phone is basically now just a outsourced computer for the rest of your stuff. Yeah. It's your connection to the outside world. It's your way of keeping up in the news. It's your way of dealing with things anywhere you go. Yeah. Hot take. I think phones are kind of sacrosanct. I don't think you should take them. It's actually one of the reasons why I like what Apple's done occasionally when the federal government has tried to force them to give them a backdoor into their architecture so they can get into phones to find evidence. And unless that's changed in the last year, the last I heard about it, Apple has continually told them to go fuck themselves. So that's a thing. Anyway, at least one of the things that they enough do. of a tangent. Rock on that kid. Clayton Cope. Super cool. But this whole situation just denotes the absolute apathy and horror that comes about when somebody is given so much influence and power that they have no care for human life. Jeff Bezos should be taxed into the ground. Elon Musk should be taxed into the ground. 
Also, I gotta be real here. There's no reason why, like, Jeff Bezos couldn't just pay for all the repairs and help actually, and, like, actually just fund everything needed for people to get back on their feet. Like, let's be real here. Like, there's that much extra money. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Honestly, <sighs> I'm gonna make a hot take, too. I don't think you should be able to go above, say, if I want to be real spicy, $500,000 before it just gets 100% taxed, um, anything above that. And I'll be perfectly honest, if uh, you want to make it higher, that's cool. I can go to like 2.5 billion, whatever you want to do. And people go, well, what if you can't afford like the larger luxuries? No, the luxuries will come down if you can't afford them. Oh, yeah. That is how value works. 100% tax margin, you should not be able to be a billionaire. That is a hot take from me. Billionaires should not exist. They are essential. I've seen literally an image of, what was that, that comic? It was like Jeff Bezos being like, I want to be a dragon. And then like, it's him sleeping on a hoard of money. Like, that's that's my problem. These, these people have far too much power and they do not care mm -hmm. for human life. So anyway, enough of our ranting. Mm-hmm. We will see you in the next one, and hopefully this gets taken care of. And, and I, I wish all the best to these people who have lost their loved ones. And, and rest rest in peace to all the people who have passed. So, yeah. See you, ne see you next time. Yeah. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, consider donating to us. You can support us on our website, transgirltherapist.org. You can also help us on our Patreon, link below. Or you can become a member here on YouTube. Um, thank you so much for watching.